All right, um, I want to just give you a little information in this video uh, to help you and something I had forgotten. Uh, notice up here I have added something to the uh, the first line mRNA style and what I mean by that is I realized when looking at the sequence that this is not genomic. Uh, they're supposed to tell you and normally if you say it's on chromosome 3 this would be genomic. Uh, in other words DNA it needs to be it would be in the uh, 3 prime to 5 prime direction and uh, actually this is mRNA this would be 5 prime to 3 prime the complement so this is the, treat this sequence as it's as if it's an RNA now the issue with that for what we've been doing using this sequence and comparing it to other sequences it's now an RNA if this is, is in RNA uh, style, which it looks like it is from what I was just working with, and I go, I, I knew that, <laughs> but I had forgotten and I didn't label it. So it's always good to label it and you forget uh, if, because they don't go by the convention. Convention is if it was chromosome three, th that means genomic sequence, therefore it's it, as if it were on the DNA. So. Uh, the sequence is in the form where you look for promoters and things like that, and it's going to uh, be in that f form. But this actually, uh, when I was looking at it, I realized, oh, this is actually in the mRNA form. So you need to label it, uh, make sure that you use some notation to let you know what it is. I said mRNA style. Uh, I just wrote that in there just a second ago. Uh, so you might want to do the same. Just some notation there to tell you that this is structured as if it were an mRNA and so if you want to go back and look for tata boxes or something like this in this you really ought to go back and do it now the tata box really doesn't matter so you guys are looking for uh, uh, GC boxes that can matter but a tata box wouldn't matter uh, a tata will work on either side of the of the uh, of the double stranded DNA so you could look for them a GC box may not so just to give you an idea, in this one, instead of looking for GGG, CGG, uh, which is interesting that you find three right here, um, but uh, that's not what you should look for. You should look for the complement to that, which would be CCC, GCC, all right? And that would be the sequence that would actually be the, uh, the consensus for the uh, promoter in this particular case, the core promoter. So let's just see where these are located. Where is this one? This one is at 73. That's a little late. And that's way in the middle of the gene. Where is this one? 26 too high. So you don't get a consensus for it at any spot. It doesn't look like 107. No, fine. Yeah. All right. So, um, you should probably find one in here somewhere. But uh, just to keep that in mind, that this is actually mRNA. So we should keep that in mind. Now, there's something I want to do, all right, um, real quick. Get that out. Um, I'm going to grab all of this entire sequence, all right, and I'm going to copy that. All right, and here I am at a website. I'm going to paste it into this website, and I'll show you that website in a second. Uh, it's dpath, d-path-734.appspot, dash dash that's A-P-P-S-P-O-T dot com. Go there, and there's this little program. Now, I wrote this program and um, well, about 10 years ago, and what it does, it just searches for sequences and it does a better job of it. You don't have to worry about the end of the lines, and uh, which I will probably explain how that can be a problem sometimes if you use a notepad. Being on the that's one reason I use Notepad plus plus. But this program will also let you get through this if you go to DPath here, and um, let's just say I want to find something that's got a CCC GCC, and if you enter that into this little program I have here. So I have just letters. I did not include the first line from the fast day, just the letters. And this is the piece I'm searching for. Here's what you will get. All right, you will get the length. All right, so there were 7,054 uh, bases. 
and I have the HCG count, that doesn't matter. But I did find six of these, I found, of size, no, the size of six or six letters, and I found three of them. One at 1,752, one at 5,130, and the 66627 out of 7,054. So of the 7,054, that's where these are. This one is at 1,752. This one would be the second one at 5,130. And this one is at 6,662. Uh, 6, 6, 6, so um, that's a good way to find and find the exact location of them, which is kind of hard in Eugene sometimes or in Notepad to find out exactly where the letter number so that's going to be the first letter that's going to be where that letter is so if you want to use that so for um, for yours let's uh, let's switch this let's go back and uh, let's switch to I don't know um, let's say we're looking for um, uh, ATG start codons uh, so start codons uh, let's search Lots of them, of course, uh, 96 in the sequence. But we know that a start codon should be after the right after the transcription start site. So if you're going to find the start codon, you could use this little program. We know we're in, in mRNA, so we know it's ATG, not TAC. And so we look, and we you already have the hint that the, the transcription start site is around 5,000. So what's the first one after 5,000? So the first one after 5,000 is at 5,083. All right, so you might look there for the uh, start codon. Uh, there's one right before it, but uh, we need to be after the 5,000 mark. So you might look there at 5,083. If you can figure out where 5,083 is, that is probably your start codon. You never know, it might be the next one. Record record the first two, 5,083. It's probably not 5,224, but it might be. Uh, depends on how long the UTRs and things like that are. Uh, but uh, 5,224. But uh, it's going to be after that. So you don't, maybe you don't know which one, but it's definitely going to be after uh, 5,000 because I've told you that's where the transcription start site is. So you could scroll down, try to figure out where these are uh, in this sequence. Um, but uh, th this little program can be helpful. Uh, I'll show you something really interesting uh, since we're here. I'm going to put in just the letters CG. Now I've told some of you that this combination of letters, just a C after a G, is very rare. And we'll talk much more about it. But in eukaryotes, it's extraordinarily rare. The, uh, what is, happens is the repair mechanisms that repair DNA, whenever they come across a C followed by a G, they have a tendency to turn the C into a T. Um, it's just a glitch. And so places that have large amounts of CG usually are places that have proteins stuck to them doing something. And, uh, or they are modified. And that's, we'll learn what, what it is that we do to CGs. Uh, they're very important. So let's search for CGs and let's see if you can see a trend here uh, of what our sequence looks like. So look at these CGs and okay, they're kind of random. Maybe there's some spaces you don't have them. And then look at this, this huge number of Cs and Gs. Well, guess where this is? Right here, uh, I'd say right about, oh, here, right here. It's where the gene starts, right before the gene in the promoter region, um, that region is full of C's and G's. And that's often the sign that this is a regulated gene, a highly regulated gene, because you are in what's called a CPG island. Now we're not gonna do CPG islands in project one, but in project three, we will do CPG islands. And this is actually the number one thing you ought to do when you get new sequences, look if, see if you can find a CPG island in your sequence because it's an indicator that there is a gene. In fact, it's a 100% indicator. There is a gene around here somewhere with this many C's and G's. All right, now up here, this one doesn't have many, and this one doesn't have a, a CG promoter either. Uh, I mean, a GC, uh, a GC box. Uh, instead, this one, ha uh, CG box, 
this one down here that you're looking at, the GPX-1, does have a CG box. This one that I'm annotating uh, uses a Tata and something else. They're like two main ones, but neither of them are a, a, a GC box, but a CPG Island, which means C followed by G. Um, you see a lot of these here, and big indication that there's a gene here, and there is. This is your GPX-1 gene, um, just to show you that. All right, you might want to use this. Um, remember that it is D path, D dash path dash 734 dot app spot, A -P -P -S -P -O -T dot com. And if you go there, you can use this and it'll give you a few statistics, the ACGT count uh, and the number, uh, the size of the sequence you're searching with uh, and the uh, number of them found and then the location of them within your sequence. Uh, so that can be useful. Now we have like 80, 189 of these. So that's not a useful thing usually to search. But visually, it's actually very interesting. All right, it tells you something visually. Uh, but, you know, we can search for Tata boxes. Uh, the consensus for a Tata in a bacteria is TAATA. -A -A. So that's the most likely uh, sequence to be found in a bacteria. Uh, so let's see if this if there's one or how many there are in a eukaryotic gene. Now this probably wouldn't work in a eukaryotic gene. You never know. Uh, but let's see how many there are. Um, there are only five of them. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that's actually useful. Uh, okay, we got five of them. No, three of them. I'm sorry. The size is five. The number found is three. So in this entire thing, there are only uh, three of those. So that's kind of uh, just kind of interesting, I think. All right. Just a little short video here to tell you about the fact that our sequence here was, is actually RNA. All right. Actually, we searched wrong, didn't we? So let's go back. Hold on before we end. Um, this is mRNA, so you would not search for TAATA. -A -T -A. What would you search for? You would search for the complement because we are in RNA, so it's A T T A T. All right, so that's the sequence we should search for in RNA, even though it really doesn't matter because uh, Tata boxes work if they're on either strand and it doesn't matter the direction. So let's see if we find those. Again, we find three. No, how many? Yes, three of them. All right, so where are they? Uh, look up here at the beginning. Now, the, the gene up here might be a Tata box. That might be interesting for, for me, but uh, so that's all I have to say. I just wanted to correct. I wanted to show you this little program and correct the error uh, and so you'd understand maybe what's going on here for a future video. Um, uh, when we start searching for the start and stop codon. Um, that's all.